And hello everyone, it is Peter Sam, the Narrow Gauge Engine here, and I am back with the second part of this little duology we have going on. Previously, we looked at the most forgettable episodes in each season of Thomas and Friends, and by that I mean everything that's not Miller or Bubba, since Miller is all just so similar in terms of structures and cliches, and I still can't bring myself to acknowledge that Bubba happened. Today, we're doing the flip of that, and we're going to talk about the most iconic episodes from each season. These are the episodes that everyone remembers when thinking back to that particular season, or just include very memorable moments. Once again, I must make the distinction that iconic in this context does not automatically mean good. This is more focused on the memorability aspect, so expect some bad episodes to find their way onto my picks, especially in the hit seasons. Anyway, enough explaining, let's delve in right where it all began. Season 1's pick is obvious. No need for build up, it's the Flying Kipper. Obviously. Its nighttime atmosphere is encapsulating, its frighteningly realistic crash is so well edited, and the prop work is strong too. In a season where it's dialogue galore and there's so much talking, talking, and more fucking talking, having an episode like this really makes it stand out. I feel like this is the obvious choice and it's everyone's favourite pick for this season, so I don't really need to explain why this episode ended up being my pick. Season 2 holds more competition, but ultimately a close shave was my pick. The Duck and Diesel storyline was such a memorable aspect of the season for me, and for many others too, with a strong opening, a fairly good middle episode, and then we end on this beautiful runaway which is intense, fun, and humorous at the end with the barber putting shaving foam on Duck's face. Plus, I know so many people out there love Duck and he is the protagonist for this one, so it definitely sticks out more for you guys that do. I could have picked Old Iron or Edward's exploit for this season, but to be honest, it's definitely that scene in the barber shop that, for me anyway, means this is the most iconic one of the season. Escape was my pick for season 3, of course it was going to be. I love Henry's forest loads, but when it comes to overall memorability, Escape takes the cake, I'm sorry to say. The grand orchestral soundtrack inspired by the likes of Indiana Jones and The Great Escape fits so well with a suspenseful moment, such as that guy almost catching Oliver and Douglas in the scrapyard, and when they're home free, man is that a good feeling. That shot of them moving across the screen as the sun rises behind them is so beautiful, it gives the ending of All at Sea a run for its money. And no, I didn't pick that episode because to be honest, the rest of it is rather basic and having one standout scene doesn't make you that iconic, especially in this season. Still a phenomenal scene, but Escape is just way more memorable. What else is my season 4 pick gonna be other than Grandpuff? A beautiful tale about a railway lost to time with an engine stuck there, swallowed up by the earth itself. What an interesting opener to the season. Duke is such a strong and likeable character, making what happens to him all the more upsetting. Plus, Stuart and Falcon are fun too, we only get to watch them grow as the season continues. Some may argue that Brit, Mitten and the gang should have stuck to the Railway series order, but honestly, this gives us a different experience and a new way to perceive these characters. Knowing Stuart and Falcon's melancholy backstory from the beginning makes us more attached. It definitely did with me, hence the mascot. And all in all, I'd say this is one of the most iconic episodes in the entire show for narrative alone. Never mind this being our first look at all of the rustic, beautiful narrow gauge sets, the characters and the cliffhanger ending. It's all just so good. There's a lot of choice for season 5, but I think ultimately the episode that is most memorable and captures all of the season's high points best is Rusty and the Boulder. An eerie atmosphere all the way through, demonstrated through the music, setting and colour, with an intense runaway following that wreaks all kinds of havoc on the Scarlowy Railway. This all amalgamates into a spectacular crash at the sheds as the boulder smashes into the sheds, causing a massive explosion. What an epic way to end the episode, it's the only time in Thomas and Friends history we've seen a fiery blast like that, and what an episode to do it with! Aside from those great features, there is the mystery of the boulder itself. Why does it have a face? What is the history of the boulder? Was it always seemingly possessed? Questions we'll never get answers to, but fascinating nonetheless, and is definitely the most intriguing mystery this season presents us with. With Haunted Henry revealing its mystery's truth, and Duncan gets spooked being far more likely to be chalked up to coincidence than what we have here. Season 5 has some stellar episodes, there's no denying that, but I'd say this is the most iconic off the bunch, even if I think Stepney Gets Lost is better. Season 6 surprisingly also has a lot of choice, with so many new characters getting their own spotlight episodes, including Harvey, Elizabeth, The Pack, and some random fogman. 
but I don't think there's an episode as iconic as Salty's secret in this episode. Salty is such a major part of the show because his character is so captivating right from the word go, shown in this episode. He wants to make friends, he wants to fit in, but knows the quarry isn't the place that best suits him and he desires what he would probably call greater pastures. But he still does his work, there's no hissy fits or tantrums, just getting on with it like the average character should. In the end though, due to his hard work, he gets his reward getting to work at Brandon Docks. Plus, we get the aspect of Salty being a charmer of trucks in this one. Whilst it's never touched on again, we never exactly see him having an issue with them in the future, so it was a strong enough aspect of his character that it had some sort of long-lasting effect. This, in my opinion, is the perfect way of introducing a character. Show off their personality, show off their ambitions, give them some form of struggle, whether it be to do with an external or internal conflict, and then have them defeat it. This was perfectly done here, and is why I believe it's Season 6's most iconic episode. We're reaching the end of the classic seasons now, and Season 7 was hard, but not excruciatingly tough. In the end, I got it down to two episodes, Three Cheers for Thomas and Gordon and Spencer, and it was the latter of these I ended up going with. For similar reasons to the previous pick, Spencer is such a big and influential part of the show that his introduction had to be included, especially because it's such a display of character as a pompous narcissist. That is Spencer at his simplest, and whilst there are definitely episodes and whole films that highlight his nature far better, this simple Gordon vs Spencer setup they did, which carried on until season 21, was great. And whilst Three Cheers for Thomas was a great way to say goodbye to the true greats of Miss and Mike and Junior, Gordon Spencer helps us to set up something for the show's future, as well as look back to the past, with narrative references to Edward and Gordon all the way back in season 1. It is just that versatile. Season 8 follows similar reasons as to the previous pick, with my pick being Squeak, Rattle and Roll. The idea of Gordon dealing with the concept of being scrapped is such a powerful thing to see him wrestle with and eventually overcome, continuing on with that idea of Gordon battling with the same ideas that Edward wrestled with in the early seasons. It's a really effective message for audiences and demonstrates a growth of his character that does him justice. The theme of scrap is really heavy throughout the season with Thomas to the rescue, Percy's big mistake and Halloween all being prime examples of its use. This episode, however, has the strongest and best constructed use of it throughout the 26 episodes we got, in my opinion. Now for Season 9, I decided to go for a pick that still works but is rather unconventional, Scarlowy the Brave. Again, these lists aren't meant to reflect popularity but memorability and this definitely sticks out to audiences at the time and even to this day as a major red flag for the direction the series was heading in. Scar Lowy and Reneas are both characterised poorly, with Scar Lowy being this daredevil cocky character that doesn't at all resemble his previous traits, and the narrative as a whole is so egregious that it's hard to find any fan that finds this one to be fun. I like Season 9, I think it's the best season from the hit era, but moments like these are still very prominent unfortunately, and that's why I'm taking the time to highlight it on my list. Season 10 wasn't too difficult to choose, as there is one episode I feel stands out above the others, and that is the Green Controller. An episode that follows Percy acting as the controller of the railway for a day, but he messes up the idioms that Lady Hat tells him, leading to rather amusing mayhem, such as Toby pulling the express, and of course, the most infamous part of the episode, James being repainted into a black and yellow pattern like a bee. This part is well known mainly due to all the merch that was created around this small but impactful appearance from James looking like Barry B. Benson. Whilst I think Dowager Hat's busy day from season 21 does the narrative concepts far better, there's no doubt that this one left a long-lasting impression on the kids that saw it. When it comes to season 11, there is no shortage of competition for the spot of most iconic, whether it be genuinely good episodes or downright terrible ones. In the end though, I went with a good one and picked Hector the Horrid. This episode is remembered for its strong message and morals as well as the characters present here. Whilst Thomas is the protagonist, we get small roles from Rosie and Bill and Ben too. Plus Hector's character change throughout the episode sticks as one of the few times a character actually grows within this era, as the next time we see him, he seems to have changed for the better. Making this one of the very few times a character actually learned a lesson within these five very up and down seasons. Season 12's easy, of course it's push me pull you. Whilst I personally would rather have this over the absolute nothingness that most of the season gave me, I still see why many fans regard it as the worst Thomas and Friends episode of all time. The characterisations of Reneas and Scarlowy are at an all time low, the runaway isn't very good and the Scarlowy railway seems to have taken a dip in quality in terms of sets, 
since their last appearances. They look more artificial and that might be because of the influence of CGI, but it still has many bad qualities besides that and that is why many fans absolutely despise this one to the core. Moving past the Miller stuff, on to season 17 and whilst there is some competition, I've been trying to give the spots to episodes I'm not highlighting on my top 10 videos, so my pick goes to Gordon Runs Dry. It's a less conventional one for sure, but we get a strong story that's very slice of life and has some cool references to the lore around it, something we haven't seen the show give a shit about since 2003. Plus, it's a Gordon story, you'd have to be mad to make one of those bad. All the trouble with mud, you'd have to be mad, all that episode. It's time for season 18 and I've decided to go for another widely considered shit episode this time to keep things spiced up. Flatbeds of Fear is my choice and whilst I quite like it, I can admit the way it presents Henry is absolutely awful and it's no wonder a large majority of fans believe this to be one of the worst Brenner episodes of all time. This episode sees Salty tell a tale of a runaway train that became a ghost somehow and when the engines hear a whistling noise they believe it to be this spectre. It's not a ghost, it's the wind whistling through a train of pipes on flatbeds. I think the concept is great fun to go through with Thomas and Emily, but Henry's bit? Not so much. Either way, it left an impact, an impact that, positive or negative, has allowed it to end up on the list. With season 19, this one is less bad and more controversial as some people, like myself, really like this episode, whereas some absolutely detest it. The Beast of Sodor is the one I'm on about, and I quite like its comedic quality, and whilst it borders on unrealism, it definitely is memorable and it definitely is iconic. This is mainly due to the Fat Controller's antics throughout, getting chased by a bull, turning into a snow monster, and that one shot of him with the dolly zoom effect. You know what I'm on about, it's beautiful. But there's also the strong Henry and Spencer plot throughout, and whilst yes, once again it presents Henry as a timid little child, it also gives Spencer some good old fashioned payback in a hilarious way. As I've said previously, if you love it or hate it, it doesn't matter because it definitely deserves a spot on the list for the lasting impression on you guys. Season 20 was one of the trickiest ones to pick from because like with season 6, there is so much to choose from. The Daisy episodes, Love Me Tender, Sydney Sings, the Coffee Pot duology. Even the bad episodes like Diesel and the Ducklings had the chance of making it on here. But in the end, I decided that the episode that would stick most with fans is Useful Railway, one of the three Audrey stories adapted from the book Small Railway Engines. I could have picked the other two, but as this one has the nice ending to the trilogy, I thought, what the hell? After all, I think there's little more powerful than a nice ending. What this meant for the show and for us was that we were truly in safe hands, even if it was only for five minutes before engines started bouncing and bridges started walking. But that five minutes was one of the best five minutes in the show's history because of that. Whilst the episodes themselves weren't amazing, they showed us that Brenner and co really do care and that was great to see. Finally, we're at the end of the road, and as I said before, there's little more powerful than a nice ending, and that's exactly why I picked this episode for season 21. Confused Coaches takes one of the longest running and most well-known rivalries in the show, and finally gives it a satisfying and quite beautiful ending with fireworks and good tidings all round. It is that ending scene that really made it beat out the other episode you might have been expecting, a shed for Edward. This feels like the show's end, and for fans like me that want to pretend that seasons 22, 23, and 24 don't exist, this is a great way to end it. Not with Thomas, but with the other main character from the very first episode, Gordon. The character that was treated so well by all the writers for so long gets to have a happy ending after all, and that is why it belongs here as the most iconic episode of season 21. Well, this little duology is over now. Let me know your opinions on my picks and what you think your picks would be. Please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that jazz. I've been Peter Sam, you've been you, and be sure to be on the lookout for the next community poll so you can have your say on the next video by me. Bye bye